I want to know everything there is to know about you. Are you going to introduce me? You must have spotted her by now. She's always there. Don't I deserve love? Somebody has to like me best. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Don't Know Her podcast. I am Scott. And I'm Michael. And here is the place where we talk about actors who are somewhat underrated in their careers. And we look at the films and celebrate them. Whoop, whoop. And who is the lucky uh, actor we're talking about today? Ah, well, this week we have the fantastic Regina Hall. Arturo, you know I'm good with faces. And I did recognize your cousin. I didn't tell the officers. I know you're dealing with a lot lately, so I, I just decided to be generous today. You are every day. What's that? You're generous every day, Lisa. Well, thank you, Arturo. So you know you can't work here anymore. All right, let me tell you a little bit more about the wonderful Regina Hall. So she was born on the 12th of December, 1970, in a little place called Washington, D.C. Is that the same year as you? No, it's not the same year. the same <laughs> day. We're Just both kidding. Sagittarius, 12th December. Oh, my yeah, God, my that you are the same. So this is fascinating. And now everything that we've watched makes complete sense, knowing you, because you're the same person. Amazing. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Well, you also, like her, um, were initially set on a career in writing or journalism. Um, Regina um, originally gained a bachelor's degree in English, and then she moved into gaining a master's in journalism from New York University in 1997. Following her graduation, though, and the loss of her father, she then looked for sort of a change of path. She wanted a change of direction at that point, and acting found its way to her. Uh, She did a few commercials and little bits and pieces before she took that leap onto the big screen. Her first movie was in the 1999 film, The Best Man, which was pretty, uh, it was a rather small part, shall we say. Um, she played a stripper, but then there was a little bit of an arc, but ultimately she was playing a stripper in that film. So not not the, the huge start we'd want for Regina, but a, a start nonetheless. Uh, she then went on to star in the sequel to that film, though, 14 years later, um, The Best Man Holiday. Um, but following on from that in 1989, she moved on to much larger roles in 2000. So it didn't take long for her to, to build that momentum. She was in a film called uh, Love and Basketball, which is a wonderful rom-com. Uh, and then, of course, as Brenda in Scary Movie, which I'm sure a lot of people will remember her from. She would then go on from that to star in three more of the follow-ups to that in the series, as well as superhero movie, Ugh down the line as well. Uh, Comedy obviously became a primary go-to for her in terms of genre work. uh, And with that, she's racked up a lot of credits in ensemble comedies, such as The Honeymooners in 2005, Death at a Funeral in 2010, Think Like a Man, and then Think Like a Man 2, which were in 2012 and 2014. About Last Night, which was a remake of the 1986 film, which is based on a David Mamet play, Uh, And then there was the remake of the National Lampoon's Vacation, which came out in 2015. Um, Her most celebrated film work, though, may have come from the past handful of years. 2017 brought her the beloved friendship comedy girl strip, and 2018 saw her in The Hate You Give and Support the Girls, for which, among many awards, she became the first African-American to win Best Actress from the New York Film Critics Circle. Uh, She's also had a scattering of prolific TV projects along the way as well. She was in Ally McBeal for a good run. I think it was 2001, 2002, she was in there. Uh, She's also currently starring in a series called Black Monday. And then she has nine perfect strangers on the cards, which is coming out very soon, which I am very excited about. That's um, based on, what's her name? Leanne Moriarty, 
Snowfall, who also wrote Big Little Lies. Um, so that's an exciting one for us all to get some more Regina Hall time very, very soon. But that's a little about the wonderful Regina Hall. But from those many offerings, and that didn't even touch on them because she's had a busy career, where did you first come to the delightful Regina? Well, I mean, it definitely would have been as Brenda in Scary Movie. I was saying. Um, yeah, I mean, we both would have been of the right age, if not probably too young to totally understand <laughs> some of yeah. what was going on in Scary Movie. I mean, Scary Movies are, and when I say Scary Movies, I guess I'm talking about the first two, and then I dropped off. Like, I'd never seen the third one until uh, oh, this episode. But those first two, I might have only watched them once um, each, and but they stayed in my mind. Like, I still, every so often, will laugh about her... Uh, Regina Hall as Brenda going to the cinema watching Shakespeare in Love. Don't go in there! No. Ah! Ah! Oh! 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 Lord, I'm ever on a Sam, this is some scary shit! Oh, oh I am scared! Oh, oh, oh. Excuse me? Uh, I think I paid my money like everybody else up in here. With all like these white people around her are like being very like um, you know trying to enjoy this Oscar winning thing. So I love it. I love it. She's all so she's always had a place in my heart for that reason. But to be honest, she's always been like in the background of things, like in my mind. Like if she was there, I think oh that'll be funny. But never really until the combination of Girls Trip and Support the Girls like really hit me. Like this woman is very talented and she deserves so much more than what I had seen, which is why we like when we brought her up for the podcast, I was so excited really to properly look at her career and think about what is possible. Yeah. Oh, completely. So yeah, pretty much exactly the same then is that it was scary movies, which I watched on repeat as a kid. We had them all on DVD and I watched them all so much and I hadn't watched them in a long time, but I did love them. I enjoyed them so much. Watching uh, a scary movie this time, it ain't good. It's 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 not a good film. The gags are so... I mean, I knew they were going to be cheap, but it's like it is literally 90% of the gags don't work. And what does work is Anna Faris, who for the most part in that those films is is really having a good time. And is fun to watch doing the gross out rubbish. But more importantly is Regina Hall. Specifically from Scary Movie in the scene you're describing in the cinema. Absolutely amazing. That whole 10 minute sequence is is gold. If the rest of the film around it is shit, it is absolutely worth it for that 10 minutes, which are just wonderful. Um, But she does then have moments through the rest of the series, which get worse and worse and worse she did scary movie one through to four she always has good bits in it but she's doing the same shtick but luckily it's a really fun kind of shtick to watch but i'm not going to sit here and say everyone go and watch the scary movie as if it's something you haven't done before because i don't (laughs) no scary movies are basically a series of sketches and there's some of them might work but some of them don't I'm not even sure you could blame you know age but Regina Hall's like you know stereotype kind of loud like not very kind of aware of her space um just all these like sorts of things which again Anna Faris as well is like the stupid white girl and um, that you see in movies um like she literally be told you know she could run to safety or run to j- danger and she'll run straight yeah. to danger <laughs> But yes, I I don't think I'd I'd recommend. Um... No, no, <laughs> no. But I mean, she is. I don't know. She is fun. But I think it's one of those things that there's no point in recommending it because if you're going to go to it, you're going to have gone to it. You probably went to it as we did when we were of a certain age, and it probably worked and did those things then. But she is, I think something you can take from it is that she can take absolutely dreadful material and elevate it so, so much 
that it becomes really really funny um she's a really incredible comedy performer she is i it's a real like one say one thing i will say about watching these films as we do like sometimes we watch the films and i'm like okay this makes sense like they had this one moment to have this like very juicy role and they you know they didn't quite get other opportunities but it might make sense because it's bespoke to them or something but with yeah. Regina Hall, it feels really like she she just was taken for granted because then she's been given these very thankless roles of like the wife or the fiance or the love interest or mother, single mother looking for a man. Or, you know, and when I say that, I mean, like, I'm thinking um, law abiding citizen, death at a funeral and um, when the bow breaks naked, a film starring Mar- Marlon Wayans and. Regina Hall as a couple about to get married and on their wedding day Marlon is keeps waking up naked in a in a elevator in a hotel and Regina's really like a pawn in this story about Marlon becoming an adult and it's she does have a moment where she she basically like you know I don't need you I'm this person whatever I'm independent but it's her father played by Dennis Haysbert who is a real like force in the story to make Marlon change. And it and it's just like, this happens again and again and again. And I mean, there are other examples, there are examples thankfully of her being used or utilized, but even like in a film, which I was excited to watch little, which is 2019, she's not really, she's in the beginning, she's at the beginning as the nasty woman, um, but then she changes into her young self and we don't see her again until the end. And I'm just like, why can, can there not be some filmmaker that can appreciate this talent and give her the ability to flex her muscles more than we get to see so far? Yeah, no, that, and that really seems to be an annoyingly recurring theme that you're saying throughout her career. Like she has been wonderful and people, love her I think people really really love Regina Hall but then when you sit down and you go and watch these things so often you wonder why it's it's just this nothing role it's like what sure you want to like oh so often comes on this podcast of course you want to cast them you want them in your film because they're wonderful but come on like you you could really harness these amazing performers and Regina Hall is so good and these some of these parts it's not that they're bad or that they're bad films necessarily some of them have been but it's just I don't understand why they're reduced to that similarly to that I think like Law Abiding Citizen I mean I would have avoided like the plague because I'm allergic to Gerard Butler I am I come out in hives cannot deal with with watching that man on screen, he he makes me feel oh, a little well, bit. Oh, well, thank nauseous. God then he wears a mask in Phantom of the Opera, so you can watch that. So I can watch that so many times. It's definitely my favorite. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, but in Law Abiding Citizen, I was like, you know what, this could actually be entertaining. I can do this one. Uh, it wasn't. <laughs> I know. Actually, it's very. That film is very very popular with with audiences. People do love this film. It didn't work. But what audience? Like straight men? Probably straight men. I, I, I think a few that probably actually listen to this podcast just as a... To, well, to they should save them. that for that straight white pride that they keep. some of them keep talking about and um, don't make <laughs> oh, us no. watch. Because literally when we watch that, maybe preparing for this during Pride Month, and that feels... That feels like an attack. Feels like we, we, did, we did something also, really Also, the way she was, the way she was cast, like they started filming and they were looking for basically the love interest for Jamie Fox. And I just la- like the idea that this film was being made and it didn't really matter, really. You, like it wasn't significant enough to stop filming or you know to consider to have this before. Yeah. I'm sure they probably had someone lined up and it fell through, but. I don't know. And they made her audition. I, I, Did they? A lot oh, of, fuck uh, yeah. off. Oh, no. So I, there's a lot I have, to, like, there's not many things that make me feel positive about that. Um, no. Back when um, Support the Girls was coming out, 
Regina Hall did this great interview with the New York Times magazine. Okay. And she was talking about how like their lists in Hollywood and there's kind of two Hollywoods for her and that she was on the top of like the list for black actors and black roles, which I mean, it is the, the part she's talking about that they're considered the, the top of this mm. list. And now because of Girls Trip being so successful and her being the lead in it and because Support the Girls getting her critical acclaim, she's now on the bottom of a trickier list that's open to everybody. Oh, um, gosh. She also, I mean, and she does, she, she talks about, this is interesting. You know, she, she's like, she gets these film or she gets these scripts and she'll be like, I really want to do it because from like listening to Regina for this she really pushed like she's fighting for a lot of these parts and these types of work but she she says like she read a script she really liked it and then she's told by her agent they went with Amy Adams and then she finds out Amy Adams isn't doing it so she chases again it's like I know she's gone they're going now with Natalie Portman I did try and figure out what film this was but I couldn't I couldn't get my I couldn't reach it but it's really interesting and I and I would say believable that Regina Hall is not considered for the parts that people her age or within her like the ten years either side of her would be considered for. Um and it's really it's really frustrating. like it is frustrating. Um but she might be the first person we're talking about on this podcast who feels like at the like right now like things could change totally for a career. Things could, and I and I hope they would. That that's such an interesting way of framing it. I hadn't read that interview, and I had ne- I can't say I've ever thought about it in that way of being like you can either be top tier of this, or now that you are the absolute top tier of this, you become bottom tier of this. That to me is absolute fucking horse shit. Um, it's so unfair. Well, yeah, but I mean, she also in this interview, just like to give more context to what you've just kind of saying that about it being unfair, it's like black audiences are what I've considered my base and I always make movies for that base. Right. Okay. So it's, I, I don't, I should, so even though she's saying there's two, mm. I think it's more the types, the work she gets invited to do. I don't know if they, I mean, it is unfair. Like, as we know, there's a huge um, injustice in terms of how, opportunities are not equal within most things in the world but within Hollywood it's very clear um but like some of the work that she's been doing should be more wide like Girls Trip for instance has been a huge success but like as you you'll know it's it's still it would be considered like the Black Bridesmaids or you know it's not and I just find it really frustrating that it's seen as other straight Mm -hmm. away based on this the race of his cast when to be honest i think they're very different movies and work in very different ways girl's trip is yeah they're both about friendship but girl's trip is more like a wild ride mm-hmm. oh and it is yeah and it is it is so much fun so it's and it is annoying you're right because you can always flip it back you can see it happened to bridesmaids when bridesmaids came out Bri- bridesmaids was the female hangover and people would always go oh the female hangover it's like no piss off this is so much better than that so don't do that but then inevitably it then comes again and it's this reductive attitude of looking at films that are telling a similar story it's not even that they're not it's like they're films that are looking at a a very broadly similar thing a group of women a group of people um going out of town to party in some capacity and and it is incredibly different and i would hope that anyone who takes kind of film and storytelling in this way seriously and enjoys films of this nature at all please do not use that reductive approach because you're going to get really different and wonderful things out of these films and girls trip is absolutely worth your time because it's a wonderful ride um even if even if speaking of regina she's wonderful in it but she doesn't she doesn't get to have the most fun in it she gets to have a lot of fun in it but it's definitely um i mean it's tiffany haddish is having a marvellous time and Jada Pink Smith is having a wonderful time and Queen Latifah. It feels like uh, Regina Hall's actually getting sort of the the most boring part, but it's also the key. It's the driving part. It's the kind of narrative drive. 
Yeah, her character is, you know, so Girl Trip, she's the main character. She is with her husband, is very successful but as a brand, but her husband is cheating on her and they're going to this uh, Essence um, Festival in New Orleans and they're all, all the, the Pinky Posse. Why have I not written that down? What flossy, is, is flossy Posse. Flossy. Sorry, I'm confusing Grease and <laughs> the Pink Ladies. <laughs> the Flossy par- Posse. So yeah, um, the four of them are meeting up to do this and uh, Ryan, which is the character played by uh, Regina Hall, is having problems with Queen Latifah because Queen Latifah works for like um uh which which uh, gossip rag right? a gossip rag yeah well life is treating me well i see that please i see you and Stu pop up on my feet once a week going to some fabulous event i love Lace your hair, hair. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like they're getting along but no it is it is very good and then you have yeah jada pinkett smith who is this uptight woman and with uh, you know a family very kind of reserved who basically through the film um, becomes much more joyful. <laughs> She's has uh, yeah, uh, to be honest, rewatching it this time because my memory is all Tiffany Haddish, who is another one of the fourth friend, who is amazing and she's wild she's like it's so funny but jada pinkett smith is also so incredible to watch in this movie oh yeah oh yeah it's great there's a real it's just really joyful to to watch it i think also now you know i know we're you know we're not in a lockdown where we're living at the moment and we're in a form of lockdown let's say but the idea of watching like four people reconnect and live like this wild kind of life um, I just think is it's just so much fun. It's really oh, infectious. Yeah. It's so infectious. Um, it's irresistible. It's just yeah. I want, I you want also get really that. good tips. So like um, Tiffany had it. <laughs> so Jada Pinkett Smith hasn't had sex for a long time. So this is quite a big part of the film of her like getting with this man. And this man is like <laughs> the most handsome, gorgeous person you'd ever meet. And um, but he has a big penis. <laughs> and. Um, I'm still not quite sure how it's supposed to help, but Tiffany had just like just grapefruit him and put a grape like chop off both ends of the grapefruit and put that over his penis. I'd never use the word penis. I feel like it's more polite than dick. I don't know whichever is like with a pe- penis up. But of course that ends badly. I would I would absolutely not let anyone near me with a no, grapefruit. Um, no. But Tiffany Haddish convincingly tells everybody. Um, mm-hmm. That's what you should do. Oh, yes, by using a banana within the hollowed out grapefruit and, and yeah. a, a very prolonged sequence of suction. Um, Performing, yeah. <laughs> she, 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 Tiffany Haddish is incredible. I mean, yeah, there's so many great bits to the film. And I guess you're right. Um, Regina Hall isn't the standout performer because she is carrying like this this weight on her shoulders like the whole time she's like oh this husband this husband is cheating and my friends know and they think less of me for this and even when she loosens up and she like flirts with the handsome guy who Mm. all these things and she kind of as you can imagine reconnects with the queen latifah she still isn't the most exciting person to watch on screen and that's not to do with her this is just her characterization yes, exactly. like jada pickett smith and tiffany haddish piss all over people in Literally. the street mm. doing like some kind of gliding thing um <laughs> so she is she's good you believe she's part of the friendship group you believe her kind of you know anxiety and fears and trying to decide should i stay with my husband for this money or should i not but yes it's it's i after seeing her like e- like have no kind of reservations or no kind of nothing holding her back with Gary movie to see then girls trip. You're like, Oh, something in the middle would be really lovely to watch her do. Oh no, that is, that's very true. I mean, there is another sequence in it, which involves them um, getting drugged up and having this trip and, and the way that she uh, deals with um her husband's mistress, girlfriend type character whilst, or but it's not even that, it's who she kind of thinks is this person. It does kind of, it's sort of throwback to the energy she was giving back in Scary Movie. What is she doing here? She's here to take your order. Oh yeah? Oh. What can I get you? You can get your mouth off my husband's dick. 
<laughs> Please. But it's it's also I think in this going back to what you were saying about her being placed on kind of or her perception of being placed on these lists within Hollywood. In Girls Trip, you she's a movie star. She's absolutely stunning. She is that person within this film about four black women. And therefore, you can understand why she's been pushed. But she's so magnetic that that's why I'm saying, like, they should be pushing her to the top of any bloody list. Like, she's she is gorgeous and just there, and she has that star power. You are rooting for her, even though it's like... Um... At the start, there, you know, as we're saying, she's maybe the most bland, but there's no, there's no question. And this is why she's so good in all of these, like all the films we've been watching, she's good. And it's just instantly you want her. So even like in Naked, where she doesn't have much to do, you're like, yes, you want this man to grow up to marry her. You know, you want these things to happen. And Girl Strip's a really good example of that. But she is a movie star and she deserves, she deserves a movie star roles. Um, it does seem mad to me. Yeah, that that does it. It genuinely does seem. I mean, it should seem wild anywhere, and that's where we should be smashing down these these doors and all of this this nonsense that's built up. But but it's just surprising. Without that, it's like she's so magnetic that it it does it just doesn't make sense to me that people sitting in casting offices would think, nah, not her. It's like, but are you kidding? <laughs> Yeah, she's so good. I mean, an example of um, her being utilised a bit more, I would say, is People, Places, Things. Mm, yeah. So this is a 2015 film, American film, like indie sort of vibe, um, starring Jermaine Clement as this... Um, cartoonist would you say cartoonist lecturer mm -hmm. he wants to be you know a celebrated cartoonist by himself but uh, himself with his work and he has done lots of work and he is uh, separating from his wife and he has two young kids two young girls he's um one of his students sets him up with their mother played by regina hall and then she's kind of integrated a bit into his life and the day is this it's, it's what you is very typical of indie movies of that time. Like it's lighthearted with a little bit of, um, I don't know, like it's sentimental and melancholic. It's, but Regina Hall, they meet and she's like, you know, my daughter did this, but this isn't going anywhere. But you can come and sit and have dinner. Yeah, you must be. Oh, I am Diane, Cat's mom. Oh, uh, well, I am. Uh... Will. Yes, I know. Uh... And it's nice to meet you, too. Look, I don't mean to be rude, but I just wanted to let you know that I'm seeing someone. Oh, uh, well. Yeah, you know, Kat doesn't know, which is why she set this up. Truth is, I don't think she'd like the guy. I'm not even sure if I like him, but we've had a couple of dates, and I just, I don't know. I feel as though I should be straightforward with you. I know a lot of people date a lot of people nowadays, and I don't know, I'm not comfortable with that sort of thing. Yeah. No judgment, of course, if, if that's what you do. I mean, you could be coming from a date right now for all I know, right? You're not coming from a date right now, though. Huh? Uh-uh. No, no, don't answer it. Don't answer it. And as a matter of fact, just forget it. That is none of my business. He's very awkward as well. There's a really great little exchange about it. So he's from New Zealand. She says that's a beautiful place. Oh, yeah. You've been to New Zealand? No, but Kat makes me go see all the Hobbit movies, so... Oh, so you know all about us and our ways. That was sassy. Yeah, I'm a sassy little hobbit. I like it. And that's all very sweet. He, like, when he leaves, he's like, do you want any more wine? <laughs> she says, no, I'm okay, actually. It was lovely, though. And he's like, great, because I'll take it. So he literally takes, like, half a bottle of wine at home <laughs> with him. Um, it's very sweet. And they develop this uh, a relationship. And it's really, it's just really delicately performed and written and well judged mm -hmm. and it was such a delight to watch her Regina Hall be able to play a character with lots of different facets to them but still have what she, we love her for so she's independent and she's strong and she's a movie star 
and she's she's the one that like navigates their relationship i just she just to me it was like i know it's like very contemporary film but in some ways it was like an old-fashioned sort of like Catherine hepburn-esque sort of part yeah no exactly that i mean i i love that she's there sort of setting the expectations she is very sceptical of it. She lays that out straight off the door in this sort of stream of consciousness monologue when they first meet. But then there is something very sweet and charming about their dynamic and she rolls with it, but then she sets it up. I'm not here for any bullshit. But then she drives it. What do, what do I want from this? And then she does invest herself in it and perhaps he retracts a little bit, but it's all kind of her drive is like you're saying the sort of drive of their narrative within this film which has got a few things going on but that's kind of a a main sort of arc and she's just so wonderful in it but it's amazing and again in a way using a comedy performer as gifted as Regina Hall is but understanding that that does not need to be broad or, or these things which she has done before those two playing against each other, they're they're naturally, her and Jermaine Clement are naturally really, really different comedic performers, but it works beautifully. It's this really natural fit. They just slot together in a wonderful way where you would understand just from their sense of humour and just from the chemistry that they build, why they would be attracted to each other. And I think that's a lovely thing to have at the centre of a film like this. Yeah. And the film overall, I really enjoyed. Um, But when she arrives, it just gives you this sense of like, which is what she does to him as well, a sense of kind of focus Mm -hmm. Um, or not even focus, but direction or something to be excited about. It's it just it felt like a hug, that movie. Um, Mm. So, yeah, I'd really like I'd love to see her do more more like that um, yeah for sure so yeah no so I think I think things are happening and she's in a movie being filmed master and as you say um Nine Perfect Strangers with Nicole Kidman and Melissa McCarthy it is like I I know I'm like I'm putting all my hopes but I'm like she, it has to it has to change for her and the real reason all like all of this sort of like energy or all this kind of excitement for her future exists is because of support the girls yes exactly um which is a wonderful film that came out in 2018 2018 i'm trying to think because i saw it at the london film festival i'm pretty sure i saw the premiere of it in the uk even though it was on a tiny screen at the bfi um but I think that's what it must have been 2018 then. No, it yeah, was 2018, it, yeah. It was 2018. So Support the Girls is this lovely little, very indie film about... Um, a, so Regina Hall plays the manager of what is basically the equivalent of like a Hooters bar. It's a sports bar where women dress in slightly less clothing than they may otherwise in other bars. Um, and she's the manager there and she's having a lot of troubles at work and at home and there's a lot going on in her life um and it's basically about her bond with all of these um young women that she works with and all these people that she works with um and she is sensationally good in this so the first time i saw it i came out being like oh that's really great and like i said it was like this the, the director was there it was very it was a very good case to see the film in but I don't remember being bowled over coming out of that. But I remember really liking it and thinking this is a really sweet film. There's things about this that really work. I watched it again and I totally loved it so much. And she is outstandingly good because this is not a funny role. Um, she's she. It's it's light. There's moments of lightness where she she gets to play funny. There's a wonderful scene where somebody pops like a party popper beside her mm-hmm. as she's having a really serious reflective moment outside um, and one of her colleagues comes out and pops this party popper and and the way she shits herself just like in the moment is great but other than that it, it's 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 
a really touching performance. It actually opens with her having kind of this moment crying in her car. And from the off, you're just like, oh, my heart is with you. I don't know where this film is going, but I'm already with you. She's just gorgeous in this film. And it's just, it's wonderful to see her getting the chance. It's a very, very small film, but it was recognised across many, many certainly American film circles. Like I said earlier, she won the New York Film Critics Award, first African-American to win lead actress. Um, but she won it a few more and was nominated a lot. And, and there was a huge swell of support um, for her after this film. Yeah. Like you say, like at the beginning, because we see her in, I guess, one of the few spaces where she can be herself or let herself feel whatever she naturally feels and she's crying but then she's interrupted by one of her the people she manages how are you doing a day honey me yeah i'm great okay i'm great i'm going all out today okay balls to the wall balls to the wall and she becomes this like kind of this enthusiastic like leader like doing everything like she's basically looking at see she knows all the cracks and she's just holding this whole place together yeah um she's doing what she morally thinks is right within a world where it's questionable what's going on and the ethics of it sure um, and there's like a new um recruit who we're really pushing the boundaries of what is appropriate and what's not and she's very much trying to lead in a empathetic way um but the film keeps like pushing down on her and pushing down at her until she kind of breaks but her break is not it's not like this very dramatic like what you'd get and say if if this was a if this was a higher budget and a bigger dramatic film you'd have like a proper kind of breakdown instead it's she's just like I don't know it's like it's just a very realistic sort of journey um completely and she's not even that because there's no there's no realization. There's no like. It's not glorifying any kind of aspect of that. She's this this woman is just trying to get through the day, and the mm-hmm. enthusiasm she's applying to for everybody is as much for herself as for the team she's leading. Like she's trying. Like there's a bit where she and her partner are looking at a flat or a house, and she, it's as if she keeps saying positive things about it, even though it's clear the partner doesn't want it. It's clear. You know, she's not really by convincing herself. You know, I like the location. You know, I, I, I gotta say, for the price, you know, it's pretty, pretty okay. And even when she like, she's like, you know, there's a question around her role, and her reaction to that is to put for like to encourage someone she wants to do well to go for the role if it opens up. Like, mm-hmm. it's, and it, but it's so well done and it's, it's so nuanced. And it is in the writing, but it's the way she's performing it. Um, oh, and her cool. eyes in this film, like, oh, just watching her go through all these things because she'd be communicating these, you know, optimistic, chirpy things. But it's her eyes, you can tell what she means and what she doesn't. It, it is, like, I had such a fond memory of watching it when it was first out. And watching it for this just made me think um, I underrated it and I loved it before. Mm. And it is a real, it's a real shame, like, that it didn't reach a wider audience, regardless of awards or whatever, but it just seems to be a sort of movie, particularly with, like, the Me Too movement and think questions about gender roles. Um, it just seems to, it's a really, it's a really good one. Also, in terms of watching Regina Hall's career, so I would say a lot of, one thing that's really struck me, and I'm talking about like the most obvious one being like Think Like a Man, but this this is kind of all of them. It's like gender roles are continuously like talked about, like it's a big thing in oh, these definitely. films. Um, e- scary movie, oh my lord! Like the the amount of I was just like, whoa, gender is like it's this real like thrown. Even in people, places, things, gender is oh, kind of talked about them. a lot. Girls trip as well, is, of course. But um, support the girls is a real interesting way to say use someone like Regina Hall who is is known for all these sorts of films and uh, uh, these films where female characters talk a certain way about men um, and behave around men in a certain way as if like they're the the reason to kind of 
push forward or to motivate the story to then just focus on the girls I support the girls and so focus on these female characters I just find it so clever to cast her in it as well but I just wish and then it makes me disappointed that she's not yeah like this is kind of a one-off I know it should have given so much more for everything that you've just said it's it's just so relatable and she just hits these beats which just land completely the the way she operates when her superior comes in so the owner of the bar is just like I've seen it many times I've been that person many times where suddenly you're like oh shit now oh gosh I've got to do all these things this person's here and the way she's selling everything or or explaining what hasn't been done and what you know it's sort of everything about it and 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 yes, it's written that way, but she plays it perfectly. You, like you're saying about her just trying. There's just this air of trying and trying, and, and she deserves so much. And then it's with that why you understand why all these girls who work with her love her so much. There's this quiet charisma, which is undeniable. And it's undeniable because she's playing it, but she's just doing a perfect job. I mean, also shout out to the other cast in it who are amazing, especially... Haley Lou Richardson, who is just sort of this the counterpart to her. I mean, also just being very optimistic, but in again, like a person you all know. If you watch this film, you'd be like, Oh yes, there there is often one of you around. And she just does it so wonderful, this ever the optimist type person. It's it's good. I I hope like in ten years down the line, like support the girls will be like seen as a turning point for Regina Hall. And that she will be on the top of this, as, as she described these two lists, she'll be on top of both. Because to be honest, I think she deserves better parts on a list for of like black filmmakers as much as she does mm-hmm. to be on the top of a list of all types of filmmakers. I, you know, I would big up her getting anything, but or anything good, not not, not just her plonking her in as a wife like they do in in other shite along the way. But she's she's fabulous, and she deserves so much absolutely so much more and in this case it feels really clear i think i was expecting to go back and watch loads of things and be like wow but no she truly does not have the recognition that she deserves that is 100 percent true okay well let's before we start focusing too much on what we want for her in the future for regina let's do the quiz Mm -hmm. and i believe it's my turn to win some amazing prize right Oh my god, it's your turn to win. And I mean, we will delay it and make sure that it's fine with all of the restrictions, but you are getting to go on a girl's trip with oh my the god. full cast. They've all said yes, they said they're delighted the to meet The Flossy Posse. The Flossy Posse, but only if you get every answer correct. Dun, dun, dun. Or oh how about god. for every answer I get right, I get to bring... Oh, the great. <laughs> okay, but Regina Hall's going to be the, the last grab. Ooh, okay. Tough, tough. I can do it. Start with Queen Latifah. You get her first. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not... <laughs> yeah. I'm happy with all of them. I'm just putting great. this back. <laughs> great. Great. I'm just... That's, that's the order it's going in, unfortunately or not. That's just how it is. Okay, so here is your Queen Latifah round. <laughs> This one's um, just a little warm-up one it's, uh, to give a bit of context to uh, an interesting point in Regina's life. So in 2010, after allegedly, this is all allegedly stuff I found online, but we're going to roll with it. Uh, after a tough breakup, it is said that Regina pursued an earlier desire and looked to give up acting to do what? <laughs> um, to become a nun. I believe you the you, you got it. You've been doing your studying. That is no, correct. And please, I mean, I know this is a, uh, a quiz for me, but do you know why she was turned down? Oh, well, that was the next part of the question. Oh. So I can <laughs> I can answer that for you because she was too old. Absolute Imagine. nonsense. How dare you? You can't be a nun because you're too old. And what terms are you too old to be a nun? Yeah. I, I, it's best not f- for me to talk about the Catholic Church. I'm afraid I get in 
I would never. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> but yes, viral. yes, that's that's one of the many problems the church has. Very much. I mean, that, that in saying too old, this was in 2010. So because she was 40 at the time, and the cutoff was 39. It was not an option. She was not to be a nun. I mean, all the better for us. I, I, yes. Um, but she might have just done it for a while. So they should have let her had a chance. If she wanted to be a nun. She should have had the opportunity, like she deserves everywhere in her career. <laughs> um, and then, sort of speaking, then of where her career is heading. So we spoke about it a little bit earlier. And and just to give some context about sort of the weight behind this. So Regina Hall is about to star in, like we said, the upcoming TV series, Nine Perfect Strangers. Um, The cast in this TV series is very impressive. And you did already name drop a couple of them earlier. Um, But can you name at least five others who will be joining her on that show? Well, Nicole Kidman... Yeah, our dear leader. Um, <laughs> praise, praise. She will always show us the way. Um, Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, I'm like my. I'm feeling really confident about this next choice, even though I totally think it's wrong. Aquafina. Oh no! But that that does feel like it should be the case. But no, yeah, that's weird. I would agree if if I hadn't looked this up again for this, and you said Aquafina, I would say, uh huh. But but no. Okay. Um. I think you uh, now. I'm like Shailene Woodley. Woody. Woodley. Oh my God. Woody. Oh. So now um, you are just going down the Liam Moriarty path. Uh. No. Hmm. Not Shailene Woodley. Oh. Well then. But not Zoe Kovetz either. And okay. also not. Um. <laughs> not Zoe. I'm sorry. Okay. You're gonna have to give me. Um. Hints. Are of any course. of them Australian or New Zealandish? No, besides our beloved Nicole Kidman, I don't believe in terms of certainly the primary cast. I don't think so. So we've got a handsome gay Brit. Oh, handsome gay British person. Richard Madden? Not Richard Madden, but that you're... Um, Taron Egerton. (laughs) Oh, now we're making presumptions. <laughs> my future, uh, my future boyfriend Josh O'Connor. I'm no, is not in it. But oh no, and, and that, yeah, now you're just you're just doing a wish list now of who you want to be gay, <laughs> rather than people we kind of we know to be. So this one is um, maybe about to get a big Disney spin-off of a character he played in a recent live action. Disney outing. Ian McKellen. <laughs> <laughs> as um, as Lumiere. Is he getting uh, a spin off of Lumiere Ghost West? <laughs> <laughs> Lumiere and the Ten. Lumiere. No, of course I know who you're talking about. Um, Gaston, Luke. Yeah. Luke. I just call him Luke when I talk to him on the phone. Oh, when, I forget when his you surname. guys communicate when he's around your house at the dead of night. Luke Evans. Yeah, Luke Evans. That's, <laughs> I must update that yeah. instead of Luke Grinder. Exactly. Make sure you change that on your phone. <laughs> so there is someone here. So a very talented and always sort of scary seeming actor. Think. I'm, I'm wanting to try not give it away too much. Um, a scary actor. Someone who seems like they'd be... Whenever you see him on screen or in interviews, you're like, oh, you're probably terrifying. But maybe not. Maybe actually really lovely. Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> I'm joking. Sorry, no, no, that's being silly. Um, Someone I think would be terrifying that would do this show. So he terrifying. does often play villain-type roles, but he also has not... Um. If we think, okay, I'll drop a film title then, where there's a lot of people, so it could be any one of many, but Knives Out. Someone in Knives Out. And sadly, it's a man. I'd love if Tony Collette was in this. If Tony Collette, Regina Hall, Melissa McCarthy, and Nicole Kim were in a film t- or a TV show together, I'd lose my shit. Um, and I also remember her. 
Okay, a uh, man from Knives Out, Daniel Craig, Christopher Plummer. Is is this same person also in Shape of Water? Is it Michael Shannon? It is Michael Shannon. Yes, Michael Shannon is one of the perfect strangers. Um. Okay. Um. So that's you've got in another two. So technically, we need one more. Um. So. What about you wanted actresses? So if we go back to actresses, then did you see the film Ready or Not a couple of years ago? Oh my God! Yeah, Samara we- we- Weaving is that Samara Weaving? Weaving? Yes, she's in it. I'm obsessed with her. Okay, she that is so that's just amazing. Okay, I this film. This it's not even a film. What the no, hell, whatever it's it going to be great. And we've also got Tiffany Boone, Bobby Cannavale, um, mm-hmm. amongst others. So I'm super, super excited for the show. It's going to be good dance. We hope it might be absolute garbage, but we're hoping for good. Yeah. And just sorry, just to, like ready or not, highly recommend. What a fun trip that is of a like horror thriller meeting the in laws sort of movie. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's definitely a good time. So does that mean I've got Regine? I've got um, Queen Latifah. So I've got you've definitely Jada got Queen Pinkett Latifah. Smith. I'll give you Jada as well. But now you're going to play for Tiffany and Regina in the final round. So okay. even though I sort of slated the series earlier, I did say that Regina was wonderful in it. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to give you um, a sound round and you're going to hear a clip of Regina Hall in one of the scary movies, and all I need is for you to tell me which of the scary movies it is. Okay. Cindy, the news is on! Another little white girl done fell down the well! 50 black people get their ass beat by police today, but the whole world gotta stop for one little whitey down the hole. The TV's leaking! So that is, of course, Scary Movie 3, where Brenda has um, been left alone in the sitting room with the TV as the ring girl comes out. And then sadly, they get, like, that's how she goes. That's how she dies in that film. <laughs> it is, it's so funny. It's just so funny. And your one doesn't believe her, um, Anna Faris, because Regina Hall's been teasing her. About oh I'm in trouble oh I'm I'm a stupid white girl. <laughs> it's really funny. It's so good. I just love that Cindy the TV's leaking line. It's so good. <laughs> I used to say it all the time. <sighs> all right, well done. One for one so far. Here comes number two. Okay, now let that shit just just mutilate her white ass and leave. <laughs> <laughs> And I sometimes I feel that way. You know, you might be in a meeting, a work meeting, and you're like, if you just shut the fuck up, this would have been fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but less aggressive. Um, so that is, of course, Scary Movie 2, where they're being chased by the skeleton person. Yeah, absolutely, it's the skeleton person. And Regina Hall just wishing that um, her friend dies and that she'll be okay. Fair enough, Regina. So you're doing well so far. So actually, that's two for four. So you've now got Tiffany Haddish on the trip. So you need to get four for four. So two more to come. And you get Regina, our queen. Here we go. Number three. I am sorry, Elder Hale. But sometimes my tongue wiggles beyond my ability to control it. This is a problem with which I have had much experience. Maybe I could help him in a room in which there are no others. Or you can all watch. I don't give a shit. I believe that's Scary Movie 4. 
That is indeed Scary Movie 4. You are doing pretty all right here. Uh, Okay, here we go. The final one. Can you do it? I think you probably can. Here comes number four. She don't love herself. I don't know. I think Buffy's sweet, Brenda. Oh, she is as fake as press on nails. (laughs) Hey, baby girl! Okay, well, that is definitely Scary Movie 1 with... um... (laughs) Regina Hall talking about Shannon Elizabeth. Um, oh, it's just so quotable, but yeah, she's as fake as press on nails. <laughs> and then like just the two-facedness of it. It's just so, it's just, it's just great. Do you know what? These clips make me, like, and this is the, the thing with Scary Movie, even though it has so many, um, there's so many, it's very easy to tear that apart because it has very questionable, um, uh, oh, beliefs everything. about the world um, but, everything. yeah but there's a fondness i have for it because it's just so silly oh it's just gosh absolutely so silly. i laughed about it so much there were so many bits as a kid that i just loved so much be it regina hall or others but those those moments when you rewatch are actually few and far between sadly but regina thank you for wonderful wonderful memories but on that You've smashed it. You get Regina. You're off to New Orleans. Have the best time, Michael. I really hope you do. Um, yeah, me and the flossy posse. I'm going to be humping a lamp just as uh, Queen Latifah did. Or drinking a candle like, like oh, Regina I'm... Hall's <laughs> agent does. I just that find it great. Pretty. That bit was really yeah. great. <laughs> I, I just, I've never done it, but, you know, what's the, what's the worst that could happen? Liar. You love drinking candles. I love a candle. I love a scented candle. Um, well, super. Well, how about we look to, I guess, the three things we were want. Yeah. Go on, Mystic Michael. Get your crystal ball out. So when I first read she was in a film called Peace, People, Places, Things mm-hmm. and Things, I firstly thought it was a, a, a a film adaptation of a play that was done at the National Theatre in London a few years ago by Duncan McMillan. And it's about a woman in rehab kind of coming to terms with her reality and her addiction. And it's a really fascinating play with an amazing part in the centre, which was played by Denise Goff in London and also when it transferred um, to New York. And I just was thought like, oh my Lord, like imagine Regina Hall having such a meaty part because this person is very extreme like she hallucinates hallucinates there's all this stuff going on i just cannot get it out of my head ever since i i mistakenly (laughs) hoped that there was this film adaptation that i somehow never heard about oh so that but that's great that sounds like something i want for her and it would be a very like that's a very Oscar or awards baity yeah. thing too. Yeah, and normally, you know, the whole Oscar baity thing becomes a bit kind of like, ugh, but no, yeah, give her some bait. Let's, she deserves it. And the play is fascinating. Like, it's such a good play. So there'd be more to mm. it going on. It's more, uh, I'm trying to think of what it what it might be like. It's kind of like Charlie Kaufman, Yorga Flans, the Moss, that sort of All vibe. Right, I would okay. give it. But it's just that part is so meaty. That character goes through a lot um, is why I think it would be Oscar Beatty. But it's not a traditional sort of uh, story. Um, but yeah, I'm with you. Like we, if Regina Hall wants to, like can have all these opportunities, she needs to, or we need to dream up or, Oh, sorry, that's a weird way to word it. She needs to kind of establish herself bigger, I guess, if that's the problem. So, mm-hmm. yeah, give her these lead roles where we'll, that will get her lots of attention. Great. Well, that that sounds wonderful. Um, where am I going to go from there? So I I guess leapfrobbing... Leapfrobbing? leapfrobbing. <laughs> I'm leapfrobbing. Ew. Ew. Leapfrogging off of um, something we mentioned earlier. So the, exactly the film you're talking about, uh, People Place Things, she worked with Jermaine Clement, who was in Flight of the Concords. So then that took me around to Take a Waititi. And 
it's not like I think of it as like an immediate fit. Like I don't want her to be in like Jojo Rabbit or something. But if I think of like the tone of that film and the way that their sensibilities seem to line up, even though their their sense of humor feels quite different or their approach to comedy feels quite different, I was then just like, this would work. And Taika Waititi really understands kind of harnessing broad comedy, but also bringing out this this quieter, more charming approach like Hunt for the Wilder People is is a really, really wonderful film. And I'm not therefore sure what to suggest. I don't know what I want them to do together. I just think it could work and it could work really well with the right project. And I think he's mm-hmm. moving in that direction. He's He obviously takes in a lot of very different things and, and they always feel very tonally his. So I think she could slot into that world and I would just like to see that be uh, a pairing that could happen down the line. So I'm going to plant a little flag on that coupling. Well, why can't, like, if we're talking about, like, a big film or whatever, why couldn't, they could do a few stuff together, but get her in this four, Thor, even four, or what was it? I don't know what number they're on, but give her, like, some four, great four. part. Yeah, she'd be she great. could be in Marvel. Why not exactly? And she could, you, oh, you could imagine her, like, because of, of course, Kate Blanchett is amazing in the third one, and apparently mm. Natalie Portman has some, she's Lady Thor or something, I don't know. But um, but <laughs> yes. surely Regina Hall could do something. No, isn't that what they call her? Or she, is Thor? I can't remember. Sure. But like Thor's lady, Thor. It's always oh, she actually. Oh no, you're right. There is. Sorry, I was. Thinking, yes, there is something. Yeah, it's like called that, Thor: Love and Thunder. I'm pretty. That's certain. it. Yes, yes, yes. And but Regina Hall could be great as some kind of I don't know somehow involved in that story. But yeah, Itaika and Regina would be a great fit. Mm, as yeah, as her kind of being that perhaps slightly cartoonish or not even necessarily villain type that Blanchett did in Ragnarok. That's a great idea. Yeah. There we go. So it could be, it could be bombastic, big Marvel. Why the fuck not? Yeah. Um, my, I've quite a specific thing for my next one because a film we didn't talk about from Regina's career is a film called When the Bow Breaks, which is a, uh, so, uh, like uh, this thriller where Regina Hall and her husband it cannot um, conceive a baby naturally so they get a, a surrogate a young woman who seems on the face of it very normal until she's not and she does all sorts of things she tries to sleep with the husband tries to like kill Regina like with confusion or the baby all these sorts of things but none of it really it's not a great it's not a good film and it's not it, it doesn't give Regina a lot to do it focuses much more on the husband And it's basically wanting to be the hand that rocks the cradle, which I think is one of the best uh, sorts of uh, examples of that type of filmmaking. Pulpy 90s thriller. Yeah, exactly. This sort of like also what lies beneath sort of vibe in terms Mm. of like somebody at home Mm -hmm. and whatever. And I think Regina Hall being incredible um, in it because she's so expressive, as we said, we support the girls. She also is a very physical performer. Um, if we talk about like scary movies and things, she, and or girls trip for some of it. And I want that would like that directed by Dee Reeves, who I absolutely love as a filmmaker. So her first two films, Pariah and Mudbound, I think are like some of the most underrated, uh, are two underrated great films. She did then make the last thing he wanted, this Netflix film, which is, you know probably one of the worst films I've ever seen but she has so much talent there and I'm just like oh go on and harness it with this kind of in some ways you know by numbers story but make it like just make it good like make it great like put it up there with um the hand of rocks the cradle um I just think it'd be so much fun to watch uh, Regina Hall do a very genuine horror thriller type film after scary movie yeah oh no that is i'm 100 percent sold on that that's yeah good quality horror thriller fun i'm always there for it but i will be 10 times more sold if if regina's in it that sounds gorge 
Um, on a very different note, I kind of then ended up leaping between, again, sort of directors, because I couldn't quite work out what I was trying to get at. But I think I got there eventually when I kind of leaped from person to person. So after our episode, our previous episode where we talked about Catherine Keener, we talked a lot about the director, Nicole Hall of Center. And I could see Regina Hall being one of the kind of lead female characters in a Nicole Hall of Center film, which I can definitely see, but there is just the thing that Nicole Hall of Center does tend to very much hit on white middle class as her, that's sort of what she seems to be doing. If she wants to branch out, then great, let's have it. But I just can't really imagine it. So then I was kind of thinking about these sort of big city, New York type vibe people and then I was like, oh, Noah Baumbach or Greta Gerwig or the combination of the two of them centering on a woman in the city and their life and it being charming and funny and, and, and having that nice balance, but just very much being about the person. I was like, oh, gosh, that would work. Um, mm. But then I thought I'm still not convinced, even though, again, great here for that. That would be wonderful. And then I remembered a film from last year called The 40-Year-Old Version, which was a first-time film by a wonderful director called Rada Black, who directed, wrote, starred in, did everything under the sun for this film. And it is wonderful. And it, it, there, it does similarly have the kind of beats and tone of these filmmakers I dis- I've described already. But... If she wanted to do something and and kind of give it to someone else or star in it too, because she was wonderful in that film, Rada Black and Regina Hall in a New York film, I just think that could be absolute heaven and that could push them both to where they ought to be. Talent, talent, talent. uh, That is so good. Rada Black, she's just like, she has also has done a lot of press for the four year old version. She just seems like such a force and then you're right like mm. i'm as excited for her as i am for regina hall after watching support the girls and 40 year old version yes. so for them to like be yeah, able to collaborate would be would be absolutely brilliant and really exciting i feel like we'd get something that we may not be getting already yeah absolutely so so my last kind of wish is um once it hit me i i have just fallen in love with this film that doesn't exist yet and I basically want a kind of a film that's like Moonstruck but centered around Regina Hall so Moonstruck is a film with Cher Uh, who won an Oscar for it who plays this woman of a certain age who's like kind of fed up with life she's like going to marry this man but kind of out of like her mother asked you love him she's like nah and like she has, she has all of her family around her, but then the guy she's going to get married to goes off to see his dying mother in Sicily. And Cher is asked to go and talk to his brother to invite him to the wedding. And the brother is this like kind of manic Nicolas Cage who's bringing a lot of energy. And you can tell that he's the man that Cher is going to end up with. And they do spark off she does the famous like snap out of it line he get he invite he says i'll you know we don't ever need to be together i just want to spend the night with you at the opera so she gets like her hair done and she goes to the um like shot and she's like she's Cher who i think looks gorgeous a lot of the time i don't think has ever looked better than in this film she's literally glowing because she's falling in love with this man and then there's a whole other things going around with like her fat like her mother and her father and all this but i feel like regina Mm. hall in a film like that which is both a, a romantic comedy but also has some more serious things going on and is very at times nuanced in terms of relationships and dynamics with the family and people's needs and desires. And, but it's also set around like this full moon making people a bit mad. I just would love to see her be given such a glamorous, enjoyable, but kind of deep or like developed part. And I was trying to think who I would get to like redo Moonstruck 
and it depends like there's loads of ways you could do it but I was thinking because also I do love Schitt's Creek Dan Levy to do like a, uh, a, some kind of moonstruck for today yeah. but of course if it's to do with race I don't think because moonstruck is very sure. much set in this community of um uh sicilians are they or like italian american i mean to be mm-hmm. honest the film dips is, is is not the clearest in some ways when it comes to that so there you know there'd be other people that might be more suitable but dan levy like because of Shit's creek is, is like really well able to look at characters and make them broad but make them feel naturalistic at the same time yeah. i just think that combination would be glorious i would give so much money to see that film Oh my goodness, well, I would give so much money at any point in time to watch Moonstruck in any capacity because it's an all-time favourite of mine. So I'm I'm with you on that. I would I would be queuing around the block to, to see that. Um, I'll then flip it. So if you're taking the romantic comedy, I'm going to go more straight on the kind of romance thing. So... The second film she ever did, but probably one of the first film projects she did regardless, was um, Love and Basketball, um, directed by Gina Prince-Bythewood, who a few years ago did a film called Beyond the Lights, which was this film sort of centred on a young musician played by Gugu and Batha Raw, and this kind of romantic tale. She's at the peak of her fame, falling out of it, this issues with her mother, played by Minnie Driver, and kind of these conflicts she has, but then this really very sexy, romantic strand that happens through it. And I would really love Regina to re-team with uh, Gina Prince Bythewood and do something like that. But again, maybe from a slightly older perspective, she could be like a, she's probably the same age as, say, like Mariah. She's probably younger than Mariah. That kind of person finding love amongst all but also just maybe not even that about her owning it with this star power we were describing earlier i just think she could play that charismatic figure a a diva of the stage falling into a really wonderful situation um you know I just think that could be gorgeous and dreamy. And and she's just a really interesting director. And and she should just ride the kind of the good vibe she's got going at the moment. She did The Old Guard last year, which was a Netflix film. So maybe the funding's still going to Gina. So, hey, Gina, how about you re-team with Regina and and make something really wonderful? Yeah. And actually, something that should have occurred to me before, that could easily be Girls Trip 2. Or or Girls Trip 2. <laughs> and I assume that is somewhere being developed. There um, must, be a, must be a discussion going on at the very least. I mean, I won't spoil the ending, but there is a new venture suggest is started at the end of the first one. So you can imagine that venture would open yeah. up a lot of doors. Um, Definitely. Oh, sure. And I, yeah, just for the fun, all of these and more we want for her. All of them. Let's have the ball. We want it all. Well, this has been like a real pleasure, really. Like it's been real, it's been really fun to sit and spend hours with Regina. It's been a good one. And I think with this one, more than some others watching a lot of films I hadn't before and I feel really glad of that. It it it's definitely a good time with Regina. So I too am very glad we did this. And if there was one film, I think we might have the same answer, but if there's one mm. film that you would, you know, plea with people or suggest to people to watch, what would that be? It's it is support the girls. Yeah. Oh yeah. Th- there would be no option other option really for me. Um support the girls is just such a beautiful film for so many reasons and Regina Hall is at the center of it and is doing as good a job as any actor has recently I mean it's one of the one of the strongest performances I would say yeah oh definitely it's it's the best she has ever been and it's the best film she has ever been in yeah 100% before we go I'd ask people to 
like subscribe share if you have anyone that's you think would be interested to hear more about regina hall or any of the actors we've been talking about yeah. in the series and you can also find us online if you haven't already on twitter and instagram at don't know her underscore pod or if you have any suggestions of who you'd like to hear us talk about next or any thoughts on anything you've heard from us so far, please do send them over. We would honestly love to hear from you. Uh, you can get us via email on don'tknowherpod at gmail.com. Yes. Um, and thank you for listening. Um, and hopefully you go out and watch some of these movies. I hope so. That's that's. I think that's something that we really want from this. And there's some good options this week especially. So go out, watch films, love films like we do. It's all good. And thank you so much for joining us again. Until next time, Michael. Bye-bye-bye. Goodbye.